Well, hello. I'm so glad you've joined me today for this video, which is video number 21 for our grade school and middle school students uh, and corresponds with uh, lesson number six from the packet of information uh, for this quarter that was mailed out to you. Um, so the live class for this video will be on Monday, April 12th at 6.15. Uh, on Zoom. So if you don't have that link and you need it, uh, contact me or the church and we'll make sure that you get that. Um, today, we are talking about the Great Commission, um, which is a time when Jesus uh, tells us to go out into the world um, and to uh, make new disciples, to share the good news of Jesus. So our faith word today is share. Um, which means to offer God's blessing to others. What a great commission to be given, to go out and share the good news and to share God's love with the world. Uh, so today, that's the story that we're going to be um, reading in our Bible. And then we'll check in with one of our wonder friends um, and uh, hear what they have to share um, about our story today. But I, I want to want you to start thinking, um, and we'll talk more about this in class uh, on Monday. Um, what are ways that you share information? What are ways that you share things? Um, and who do you share with? Um, friends, family? Um, maybe you have clubs that you belong to, different things that you do. Um, who are the people that you share with in your life? Um, and if you were going out on a journey into the world, uh, what would you take with you? Because um, you'll be meeting people out there in the world. Uh, what would you take with you to share? Um, and if you could go anywhere in the world to share about God, where would you go? I hear Hawaii is lovely. That would be a nice place to share about God. Um, but I don't know if it's just about vacation destinations, but where in the world can we go to share the good news? Um, I suppose maybe the answer is everywhere. But I know each of us probably have special spots that we'd like to go to and see in this great world that God has given us. Um, so think on that. We'll talk a little bit more about that at class on Monday. Um, but today we're talking about um, when Jesus uh, uh, commissions his disciples with the task of, of forming a community of believers. Uh, this community is to embody Jesus's presence in the world and strengthen and guide God's children. And isn't that what we do now as a community of faith that we do for each other when we're here at church? Um, that our church community, our faith family, we are following that great commission that the disciples went out into the world to create. And we're still creating it today, uh, which I think is so exciting that here we are over 2,000 years later, uh, still going out and creating community, creating these, this community of believers that we can be together to lift up and share and love each other, just like Jesus tells his disciples to today in our scripture. So let's turn to our scripture lesson. I'm reading out of Matthew uh, chapter 28, and this is verses uh, 16 through 20, uh, that we learn of the commissioning of the disciples. So let us listen to the word of the Lord. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always until the end of the age. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, in that scripture, they talk about um, some doubted. And uh, in church on Sunday, um, our scripture talks about the disciple who doubted. And we've heard that story many times, I'm sure, of doubting Thomas, who needed to see with his own eyes 
um, that Jesus was alive. And Jesus calls him out uh, and says, blessed are those who have believed, but not seen. Um, and I think that's an important story that we remember about these disciples who struggled to hear when they were hearing that Jesus was in fact alive. Um, that just like doubting Thomas, oftentimes we doubt uh, that we can doubt our faith, that we that we sometimes struggle because we can't see it and touch it. Um, we have to know it and trust it. Um, and that can be hard. So I like that we hear that right before Jesus says, go out into the world, because he knows that these disciples, when they go out into the world, Jesus won't be right there with them. They can't just be like, see, this is my friend Jesus. He died on the cross and God brought him back and God sent him to earth to save us from our sins. They have to go out and teach people and tell people and get them to believe on faith because they're not going to be able to see Jesus in person. So this commission's so important because that is like the very beginning of the church that, that he says, go together and form these communities, make disciples in all the nations all around the world that we together are this community of faith. Um, and I love that because it makes me see, I read that in the Bible then, and we're still doing that today. And to me, that is such a wonderful connection and a wonderful tie to these, these first disciples that as we are today's disciples, we still have so much in common with them. For better or for worse, sometimes we doubt like Thomas, and sometimes we do a good job of sharing the good news and creating community just like Jesus asked us to. So we're going to talk uh, more about those things on Monday, but I thought first, why don't we watch our video together from our wonder friend and see uh, what they have to share about our scripture today. So I'm going to pull it up here. Let's see. Let me make sure I share the sound so I know you guys will be able to hear it. There we go. And let me get nice and big. Hey, everyone. I'm Samuel. Did you know that Jesus gave us instructions on what to do when he was gone? After the good news spread that Jesus was alive, Jesus brought his disciples together to share important instructions with them. They met Jesus on a mountain, and some of the disciples worshipped, but some of the other disciples weren't so sure. They doubted. I imagine they looked at each other, wondering if this was real. This was such a strange situation, and they didn't know exactly how to handle it. Even in their doubt, they still came to see what Jesus had to say. Jesus wanted to make sure they knew that they still had work to do. Jesus didn't come just to spread love when he was here, but to teach all his followers how to spread love too. The disciples were told to go spread the messages of love community, joy, and peace with everyone they could. This was good news of Jesus. Even if they didn't understand all that Jesus asked them to do, they knew that telling others about their teacher and friend, Jesus, was important. Friends, it's okay not to know everything. Honestly, none of us do. It's okay to wonder and to have questions about what you see around you. Every time I hear this story, I have a new question. This time, I wondered if the disciples were nervous or excited to go share. Sometimes, I feel both. Wherever you are and whoever you are, you can still share the news of Jesus. Each of us can share with at least one person, and then that person can share with another. This is how good news is spread. Sharing good news reminds others to share too. Now, it's your turn to wonder. Well, he made some pretty good points in that video. But now it's our turn to go out and share that good news. Uh, just like our disciples did 2,000 years ago. Here we are, still sharing the good news of Jesus. 
So we're going to talk more about that at class on uh, Monday, and I hope that you'll join us for church on Sunday. We are now worshiping uh, in person as well as uh, the broadcast online, so maybe I'll even see you in person. Uh, it's been wonderful to see those of you that have been able to return to live worship. I'm always excited to see you, but I'm still so thankful that we have time like this together that we get to chat. So I can't wait to see you or talk to you on Sunday. Don't forget, you can always join us for chapel time. That's at nine o'clock on Zoom. And there's a link for that as well. But I would love to have uh, you come for that because it's such a nice time for us to talk and pray together and have some fellowship on Sunday morning. So uh, I hope I'll see you there. I know I'll see you at church on Sunday. And I hope to talk to you at our live class on Monday. You have a wonderful weekend. And I'll talk to you real soon. Bye for now.